Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. This is a long-awaited video. I feel like a lot of people have been asking for more details on this and how we implemented a barcode system into our store. So, kind of like I've said in some of my past videos, when you're typing into the remarks field, you know, you need to type in the exact number. So if you're uploading items, let's say um, you're parting out a set and you have all your drawers kind of spaced out, you know, and you have pieces in this one, pieces in this one, pieces in this one, they're all there. Now what you need to do is you go in and you assign each piece the specific drawer number. So in this case, it'd be D1576 or 1576. And the problem is on the computer, you have to type in D1576. And let's say you typed in 1575 on accident. Well, now when you go and you get an order and it says the, the you know, whatever piece would be in here, it's going to say it will be in 1575. Now you're going to go look in 1575 and it's not going to be there because you made a typo when you were inputting your piece here. So what we decided to do, it also takes a lot of, a lot of time to type in. You know, so typing in D1576 takes more time than it does to simply just scan the barcode. Um, so, so what we did, it was actually one night we were parting out a set that had 1,500 pieces, and um, we had we had 18 of those sets, I think. And so, you know, we spent a ton of time parting them out and stuff, and then what we ended up doing is, well, actually what I did is I, I was up really late that night, pretty much like for, it took like three hours to input everything because I had to find the piece and then put it in the in a drawer and, and assign it the drawer number. And I was doing it all manually. And I talked to one of my partners and I was like, there's gotta be something we can do. And we couldn't figure anything out. And all of a sudden, maybe an hour and a half after that conversation, just randomly in my head, it just popped in barcodes. Cause the way a barcode system works is, you know, you have your barcode scanner and then you have your barcode. And all you need to do then, um, I guess I'll just do it now, you know, is scan the barcode. And then essentially what it does is it just inputs or, or uh, when it's plugged into your computer. So this one's actually really nice. So I'll kind of, I guess, review this one in just a second. But in this case specifically, it uh, types it in here. So if I get rid of this, when I scan a barcode, you can see it typed it really fast. So what that essentially is doing is just finding, you know, this, this code here or these lines here equals the digits D0350 and types it really fast into the search field. So some people were asking, you know, what, what, uh, um, I guess, uh, application or, uh, what's the word software do you use to, um, make the barcodes? We use something called BS or sorry, BC studio, which stands for barcode studio. I'll put a link to that in the description and it creates these really nice barcodes. You can do custom things. In this case, we print them on these Avery labels. So the 5267 um, for a laser printer. And this is default built into the um, the program. It has all the stuff. It knows the size of the sheets and everything. So now we have all this. It, it prints out the number. And obviously, we still stick numbers on the front. Because when it's on the front of the wall, you still want to see a big number. It would be, you know, let me flip around a drawer real quick. If they were all that small, you know, when you're back here, it would be much more difficult to find which drawer you're in. So we still do put regular numbers in the front and then all the barcodes just go on the back because we don't need to access those wallets on the wall. So showing you, I guess, a little bit of, you know, like, like what our equipment we use, we have this, uh, I think it was a Tro, Trostar or something. Um, this is really cool. It, this one specifically, I'll put a link in the description. We purchased this on Amazon. I want to say it was around $50 or so. This one is cool because it can operate over two different frequencies. It can operate over the normal 2.4 gigahertz, which is what this does. And then it goes to this base station, which is plugged in, in this case right here, to the my laptop. Usually it's plugged into our Mac Mini over there and it just kind of stays there. But in this case, it's plugged in here. This is also a charging station. So when you put it on, there's a few pins in there. This, see the little metal pins? They touch the connection at the bottom there. And it charges and it doesn't, uh, it won't die. It also, uh, can run on Bluetooth. So this can technically sync, I believe, to your phone, um, and you can have a Bluetooth mode to it, and it'll pair with your phone or, or iPad or some uh, you know different tablet, doesn't need to be a computer. And now you can actually type and, and send that information to a, um, a different device, which is super cool. Haven't used that, but you can do that as well. A um, little bit of the, the uh, functions of this. It comes with this nice card, actually, and this is not the whole menu. The, uh, the whole menu is in a booklet which has a ton of barcodes. And essentially the way these work are, you take this and you scan one of the barcodes and these barcodes will um, 
program this to do certain things. So in this case, what we do is we don't want to end with enter. That is one of the defaults. What we want to do is end with tab. So, you know, we scan that end with tab. You can scan it a few times to make sure it's good. And now what it's going to do, instead of clicking enter, so if, let me do a end with enter. And then when I show you on the computer here, if I scan a barcode, it's going to essentially click enter on your keyboard and now search for it. And obviously in this case, nothing's gonna come up because it's a uh, custom thing. But what we can do now is I will go back to here and I'll click end with tab. Do it a few times just to make sure it's got it. And then when we go back to the computer and we scan a different one, you'll see what it did is it clicked tab essentially on the keyboard and went to the next um, field that it could fill in. So that's what we do because if you click enter while you're parting out, it, try, it uploads at whatever point your hit or uh, your key is at. So if you haven't input all the remarks, it'll just start go to the next page, and you don't want to do that. So that's what this little thing is for. Super nice. Um, and then there's a few modes on it. There's a storage mode. You can actually scan multiple barcodes, and it'll store it, and then you can upload that data to your um, like computer if you want. And then on the back here, we have different things. You can uh, go to the 2.4 gigahertz setting or the Bluetooth, um, you know, the wireless and stuff. Um, super, super cool. You can view the battery life, so you can click or scan that, and then it'll fill in. You can see our battery's at 95% here. Um, oh, it actually is still on the enter, I think. So end with tab. So it comes with this cool little code. Um, there's a ton more settings. You can add suffixes um, and a ton of different things on this specific scanner. And it's super nice. If you want to, you can also plug it in with a USB on the bottom there and just tether it to your computer uh, directly. But that little base station is perfect. So a great example of, of uh, efficiency is implementing a barcode system to your store. And if you use the BC Studio, it'll create these really nice barcodes. And then there's things you can do like this. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna go to my inventory. And obviously when you're parting out a set, it makes it significantly quicker um, to input all the pieces in the drawers they go in because you could just scan it as opposed to type it in. And it pretty much eliminates any uh, errors that you could potentially have. And I assume most of you know, but on the computer here, what you're able to do is you can actually search based on remarks. And the remarks are usually where you put the drawer number. So you, the default, I think, is, is up here, the catalog name and number. So if you wanted to type in like a two by two brick, try and type with one hand here, it'll now search for a two by two brick. And all your two by two bricks will come up, anything like that. But let's say you wanted to see what was in drawer 962. For example, if you go back to your inventory here and you type in, in this case, it'll be D0962, nothing's going to come up. It'll say there's no items found, but, but you do have something in drawer 962. So why is nothing coming up? Well, you can click this remarks field here. Now it's going to search for the remarks. You click go and your remarks will pop up. So a great example for this is if we come over here and let's say, you know, these two drawers, right now we're working on kind of combining drawers that are too small. This drawer here, obviously, is only taking up a little bit of space, and this one's not very full either. So what we can do here is on the computer, we'll click the little remarks thing, go to the keyword, and then we'll grab our barcode scanner, and we want to consolidate this drawer 782, um, and we're going to click go. And now, drawer 782, is, it shows what's in there, and, and that's what we have here. So now what we want to do is we want to put these inside of this drawer. Now there's nothing in this drawer and they're all in 785. So what we're gonna do now is select this My Remarks field, so it's totally selected like so. And then we can easily scan the 785 drawer, and you can see it typed in this remarks here. So this is the same thing as if you were uploading items. Now what you do is click Submit Changes, and then if you really wanna just verify it, what you can do is go back to Inventory, and then go to the Remarks, click the keyword, and then scan your barcode. And now you can see we'll have both pieces in the same drawer. So obviously that was much faster than typing it in. And again, there's no chance now of making a mistake unless you put the wrong barcode on the wrong drawer. Um, if you have any questions as, as to how this barcode system works more specifically, um, I can try to answer it more in depth. But uh, that's just kind of a little overview as to how our barcode system works here. Um, and it really is much, much faster um, to put all the pieces into your store. It's very convenient to hold this and just kind of go around with it. And it makes it much faster to do everything, even especially if you have two people. If you have two people, it's really, really fast. I know a lot of BrickLink sellers are just selling alone, but like we have a small team. There's three of us here that do it. So it's very efficient when one person's scanning and the other person's just sorting or calling out pieces or putting them away. 
Um, we can we can get through a set really really fast. Plus, it's kind of cool when you see the back of the barcodes. Uh, it just looks pleasing. So yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Um, don't forget Sunday, I do a, qu a weekly question thing, so I can try to answer any questions uh, relating to this specifically in that. Or if you need help, go ahead and uh, you can send a private message or something, and I can help try to set up the barcode system. Again, I'll leave a link to the BS or sorry BC Studio in the, in the description as well as this specific barcode scanner. And I'll even put these Avery labels um, in there. These are super nice. They're just about the right size for the Acro Mills drawers that we use. Um, yeah, so thank you all for watching. And uh, those of you who have subscribed, really appreciate it. And uh, be sure to tune in on uh, Friday for another video.